Ever since I put up my orchestration walkthrough screencast the other day, I've got a ton of questions about the iPad and what program is running on it. So I thought I'd do another quick one here and explain it all to everyone in one go. So here it is. On the iPad, there's a program called Touch OSC Running. In order to set this up and get it to the iPad, you need to use the Touch OSC Editor, which I'm running here on my Mac. And this is the program that lets you create the layout and then download it to the iPad. Um, it's pretty simple. If you look here, I just created this uh, simple demonstration button. What you can see is it's two parts. There is the, uh, the actual button, and then you have to put the label on separately. The button, you don't have to worry about renaming this, but you can change the color and do whatever you want. I send OSC information. You can also send MIDI information, but you still need to run another program to interpret that. But OSC is more powerful, and I can then have it translated into MIDI or into key commands uh, on, on the Mac and control lots of different things. So uh, you've created that. You just go left click, create a push button. If you create a toggle button, you're going to push it once and it's going to light up, and then it you have to push it again to unlight up, which is no good for what we're doing. Um, you can do faders, rotaries, all sorts of other things, uh, but for my purposes, we don't need that. Uh, one cool thing that's come along since I set up mine is that you can do multiples now. So you can open a grid like this, and you can actually tell it to be more. So you could fill your screen with this and then set it up like that, drag it out to however you want. And then, unfortunately, you still have to make the labels. You want to send that to the back. And then you can grab this and drop the labels. The cool thing is, though, you can copy and paste. And then you could create a whole row and then paste the row and everything. So it's pretty simple to do. All right, so once you've done all that, then you'll need to get this to your iPad. Um, and I suggest you draw this out first. Uh, think of everything you need because it, you know, it's a little pain to keep downloading and adding stuff. So let's just save this as something so I don't screw up my uh, actual ones. So save. So you can have multiple pages in here. I'm gonna leave my actual pages. Uh, I have the main work page. Then I have the hairpins paster, and then uh, I have this one, which is a MIDI keyboard and number pad. I don't actually use this much anymore because I'll, I'll travel with the MIDI keyboard and uh, the uh, number pad, but it was kind of some fun and sport to set that up when I was working on the whole thing. All right, so we need to get this onto the iPad. So we'll press this button here and then go into layout and we add oh I have to tell it that we want to sync first so press that button now it sees my computer and it's downloading that new one and now we have iPad demo so we go done and if I hit there you've got all those buttons right so that has to get translated now. So you run a program called Oscillator. Now you'll see when I press a button here, you can see little lights. And then you can tell these to go to wherever you want. I have mainly MIDI notes going out. Quick keys can respond to MIDI notes and uh, it's just easier to have hundreds of MIDI notes than come up with crazy keyboard combinations uh, and you know this is got a lot of things in it. it's quite a big template um, you need to decide on a port and you can set that up here uh, when it says found hosts you can have multiple things running and you can have multiple computers and you just hook into whichever one you want it'll find the port you can change that and, and do whatever you want but my main one is on 802 now to set this up the first time though, let's just do a, a new one. I'm going to close this out, don't save, and then we'll go new. 
So let's say we want to set up a new thing on here. The first time you have to create the buttons. So let's, we need to put this on 802. So that's our channel. All right, so now when I press this, you see it creates the buttons. So you want to do this in order, just so it stays organized. That's probably enough for us. And each time you hit a new button that you haven't hit, it will give you the, uh, it'll come up there. And then you can actually lock this if you want so that it doesn't accept any new buttons. All right, then you just decide what you want to send. So you can send MIDI, uh, MIDI controllers or a MIDI note, which is what I send a lot of, or a key code, which is just going to be key, any key from the, from the normal keyboard or a key command, key combo, um, or any other crazy stuff, but I keep it pretty simple. So you'll see mine, if I go back now to my actual layout, is just sending MIDI. So MIDI note, and then you just, sorry, you just set a value and a channel, and Oscillator has its own MIDI ports. It's pretty simple. And once you set this up, it's set and forget. It just opens when I start my computer, runs in the background, this hooks in automatically. Uh, I never, never have trouble with it. And you can get really complicated or keep it simple. Mine's pretty simple. So let's look at a, uh, a quick key and see how it's gonna work. So if I touch this one that says, let's try harmonics. Let's find where it is. There it is. You can see it's uh, that button there sending a G2 on channel two. So if I go to my quick keys, okay, so you can see I have hundreds and hundreds of shortcuts all in here. Um, a lot I, a lot I do use, some you know, are things that I've programmed for one specific task and then not use again, but I actually do use a ton of these. So let's just search harmonics and here it is, harmonics at a fourth, that's the one it's doing. So quick keys allows multiple triggers. So I have a couple of triggers in this. I've got option shift H, that's a really old trigger from uh, I guess when I first programmed that. Then I've got the MIDI note. And then if I'm not using my iPad, then I also have a, um, a sticky key. So I hit F4, H4 and it will run that. And if I want the harmonica with the fifth, then I do F4, H5. Uh, so you can have as many different triggers as you want. And what's cool is to set this up, you just go here and then play the, hit the key and it sets it automatically. So you don't have to remember anything. You just set it once in Oscillator and then it does it here. And if you ever wanna change it, then it's easy just to keep pressing buttons. So you can see here's the uh, the quick key, what it does, it's a lot of steps. Um, and then it has a nested quick key here that will open the, uh, the harmonic plugin. Anyway, let's see if that works. So we don't need to save you. So now let's get something open in Finale. Um, here's the uh, example from the, the video. So let's just say we do need to make something harmonics. Let's pretend that we want this as a harmonic sounding up there. Let's pretend that that was what, what came in. Uh, if I was to manually do that, I would have to uh, drop it two octaves. So dun, dun. I'd have to delete the harmonic circles. Then I would have to add a fourth, um, which I don't even remember how to do transposition manually. There it is, because I used my other subscoping thing. So I need to preserve up fourth. Preserve it fourth. Then you need to go to TG Tools, Music, Harmonics, and you need to make sure that these settings are correct. Um, you don't want sounding pitch as a note. I don't like it when people do that because the harmonic can only make one note with that fingering and the players have been doing it since they were four, so they don't need to know what the note is. You might need to know, but they don't. All right, 
so we just press go and you can see it's done the harmonic but that was a lot of steps okay so let's go back to what we had if I want to do it I just select that and I press the harmonics button it deleted it did the circle it added the fourth and then it ran the TG plugin so by doing this I cut down a lot of time and it's something I do quite often so that's the way that works and then the other thing I was going to show a little bit of is these other things so the shuttle um, mainly I use when I'm in DP for scrolling and then the smart quantize I show you in the video I have hooked up here and it brings it up there and then enter there I do use some of the other buttons but they're, they're the main ones and then play and stop and I showed how I can do this in the background so let me just get this to the bottom and you go up All right so I'm in finale and I'm pressing play now how that one works is that this has a USB driver so if I look here in shuttle settings and find where the window went there it is and I look at finale when I press that button you can see here it sends F13 this can only send key commands and the catch with this is because it's USB it's always going to go to the front most app so if I'm looking at um, at finale it runs the finale set the minute I switch to DP it starts running this set and it, this same key now presses spacebar so it, it will swap if I do that it says sends a command option D okay so that's also important what that's going to do is when I do this while I'm in finale key uh, quick keys here's this and runs a quick key that switches to DP and then in DP that same thing is other key commands to scroll left and right so if you watch what happens I'm in finale and then I scroll and we swapped apps and we did that so that's using the key command to go to quick keys to swap apps and the driver now switches and I'm sending a different key command to DP but to do the playback in the background it's a little trickier DP will respond to MIDI in the background so I need to get the key command that this driver sends out into MIDI and to do that you use a program called Bohm's MIDI translator so let's uh, have a look at the uh, the layout for this one oh, where is it there we go it's pretty simple I have a couple of other things in here but basically you can see when F13 gets put down it's gonna play out a MIDI note and that is the same MIDI note that when you go here and look at your commands for play here is the MIDI note it's the same as spacebar that's one cool thing that DP does uh, that Cubase can't do. Cubase only has um, key commands. DP, you can set multiple key commands, but you can also set MIDI events as, uh, as triggers. So that is how I did that. Uh, the Bohm's only came out with that functionality a couple of years ago, uh, and I was waiting forever for it to work. I tried using all sorts of other things. I had a... Um, Yukon controller, all sorts of other hardware things, uh, Huey interfaces, but it was all clunky and it didn't fit in my hand. So once I got that to go, everything was great. One other little app that I'm running is this one here, Keyboard Remap. No, I don't want to quit. I want to have a look at the preferences this is actually designed for laptops that use you know this same keyboard um, so that you can tell keys to do different things uh, the function key 
uh, I really need it as a function key. So I have it remapped as a control key because on a normal keyboard, your control is right here. And so you get used to doing this and on your laptop or this keyboard, you're twisting like that and it gets uncomfortable. So I made that. So function is the control and you're missing an, a, uh, an enter key on this keyboard. So this second option I made into enter and I run this on my laptop and the desktop and you can do all sorts of other crazy things as well. Um, but that's, that's what I'm running. So hopefully that explains a few things. Uh, there's a lot of resources online. Um, I mean, I worked it all out, so I'm sure you can too, but that's it. So it's touch OSC running to oscillator running to quick keys running to finale or or dp uh, and that's how it works thanks for listening